November games are always big, but this one to start off the month of November is huge for both the Salukis and the opponent, the South Dakota Coyotes, who come in the Carbondale for the first time since 2018. It's been a while since the Coyotes have been here alongside Mike Trude. I am Luke Martin. Mike, South Dakota, they were just coming off their longest winning streak as an FCS program, falling to their arch rival, South Dakota State. But that was the first Valley football game this year that they trailed in. It's been a really good year so far for Coach Nielsen's group. They are a solid group. Looking at, at all of their stuff this week, uh, they deserve to win all six of those games. They played well on that six game winning streak and just didn't have enough against South Dakota State and you can't compare games. South Dakota State is really, really a good football team and South Dakota is a good football team coming into Carbondale this weekend. We think about Aim Bauman, his journey at South Dakota started last year when he came into the second half and led a comeback for the Coyotes against Southern Illinois. One thing he does among many things outside of his two interceptions last week against the Jackrabbits, he takes care of the football and puts themselves in really good positions. Yeah, they've only got three interceptions all year, two of them last weekend in South Dakota State. He's passed for over 1,600 yards, a really good game manager. He's got the feet to get out of, uh, out of situations and get key first downs. He can make the throws. He's got three or four guys that he goes to all the time. And from that game last year, and believe me, I remember that game, Southern had a big lead going in to the middle of the second quarter, fumbled the ball, and South Dakota went down the field and scored. And after that, it was all Coyotes at home. When you think of this South Dakota offense, they, yes, no question we got about those weapons in a moment, but their biggest improvement has been up front. They were one of the worst in terms of sacks allowed last year. This year, it's immensely improved. Only seven sacks allowed on Bauman throughout the season. Yeah, and, and he's good at getting the ball away quickly, but he can throw the deep ball as well. So that offensive line has given him the time. They are a good running football team. They're not the best running team, but they seem to get the yards when they need to and when you have a Travis Tice in the backfield uh, you give him the ball and he has been a, a, a huge huge weapon for this Coyote team and always seems to get the big run when they need it. You mentioned Tice. He had over 100 yards against the Salukis last year, one of two Coyote running backs to do that in that game. But Carter Bell on the outside at receiver, nearly 2,000 receiving yards in his career. He is going to be an, a guy to keep an eye on if you're a Saluki fan. Yeah, without question. The, the good thing about the Saluki secondary, though, is they're – Teams that have had a, a number one receiver have not gone off against the Salukis this year. There haven't been any huge, huge games against the defensive backfield for Southern, but Carter Bell is one of those guys that they have to pay attention to throughout the ballgame. This is a defensive team that for most of the year by pro football focus has been one of the best tackling teams in the country. They entered this weekend as the fifth highest graded team in terms of tackling as well. But it starts with their down linemen as well. They've got two big guys there. Nick Gauss and Brendan Webb, each with four and a half sacks on the year. So they can get to the quarterback. They probably get a little help from the backers, but that's a solid defensive unit. Look, we mentioned it at the start of this preview, how important this game is to both of these teams. Sometimes it can be overplayed. This could be a really good way for either team. Their seasons could go in opposite directions from this game, but there's national seeding on the line. There are huge implications with this game to start off November, Mike. There's no question. Both rated in the top 10. One's 10, one's 9, depend on what poll you're looking at. The game's at home, so Southern is going to have extra eyes on the game from the NCAA committee who's looking at seedings and all the teams for the playoffs. Each team is 6-2. and two. If you get your third loss tomorrow, that means you've got to win at least one of the final two to be what they call playoff eligible. A win for Southern could catapult them into who knows what. And then for South Dakota, they still have to play North Dakota. It doesn't end Saturday, but it can be the beginning for one team and could be a really, really tough loss for the other. It really could be a crossroads for both teams as both of them have high expectations looking for the remainder of this season. Be sure to join us here at Saluki Stadium tomorrow. It will be an early kick, 1 o'clock kick here at Saluki Stadium. You can join us for the radio coverage starting at noon. For my partner, Mike Trude, I am Luke Martin. Until tomorrow, here from Saluki Stadium, go dogs.